Good morning. Um, let, let us start with a word of prayer. Um, our Father, who art in heaven, thank you for this day. I, I pray that um, you put your words in my mouth, that um, the fog that, that is in front of us gets dissipated so that we may understand and we may know what it is that you want us to, to learn and to prepare for. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, just to uh, um, give a, uh, a brief idea of, of, of what's going on. Um, last week when, when Bobby was doing his sermon, this, this came to my mind, and um, I've been putting this off for, for a long time. Um, I have a, a friend who's, who's a friend since, since school, and, and um, every so often he'll, he'll come to me and, he, and he'll say, well, well when, when is this going to happen? Is it, is it going to happen now? I mean, is it going to be this year, next year? Um, and, and usually my answer is, 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 is not yet. There, there are things that, that still need to happen. And um, so I, I, I think that, that it's, it's a good moment right now that we're talking about the, the end times to, um, to talk about, okay, so what are the things that are going to happen leading up to his coming? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people think fire and brimstone are going to be falling everywhere before he comes. Well, uh, yes and no. <laughs> before the fire and brimstone, things still need to happen. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a lot of people think that they're going to be uh, tomorrow or the day after they're going to be driving and, and suddenly Jesus is going to show up. Um, no. <laughs> um, even though we don't know exactly when, uh, there are things that, that still need to happen. So um, God has shown us he keeps his word. We trust that uh, what he says about when he comes, that's what it is that's going to happen. Yeah. And that's where we get the, the scripture reading. And, and for context, um, Jesus with the, was with the apostles when he said this. In, in John 14, 29, he says, and now I have told you before it come to pass that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Um, in, in, in the Bible, the, the Bible is, is littered with prophets telling people what's going to happen before it happens. And, and we may say, well, you know, that was then. Now this really doesn't happen. Um, the irony is, yes, it does. Yeah. If, if, if we go back and, and, and look at the Bible, it says, okay, so what has already happened that the Bible has told us would happen that we can see now? Yeah. Um, the, the, this morning, um, someone mentioned uh, Daniel. Um, Daniel, the prophet Daniel, lived around um, 605 before Christ. Yeah, just to give you context. And... Um, in Daniel 8.19, if you have your Bibles, we're, we're going to be looking a lot, uh, a lot of verses. Um, it says, Daniel 8.19 says, And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for the time appointed the end shall be. In other words, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens, so that when it happens, you might believe. Yeah. It says, uh, Daniel 8.20, and, and, and before I read this, I'm going to give you context. So Daniel had a whole bunch of dreams, and um, King Nebuchadnezzar had a couple of dreams. And one of the things that Daniel did is that he interpreted the, these dreams. Yeah. And every single thing that Daniel said would happen, happened. Yeah. So much that um, King Nebuchadnezzar is the only king that actually has a book in the Bible, yeah, because he believed. Because when Daniel told him what would happen, it did, because yeah. God was showing him. Yeah. So this is the context, and, and even though there are, there are a couple of dreams, one's about a statue, another one's about a whole bunch of animals that are really weird, and then there's another dream about some animals. And what I'm going to be reading to you is about um, Daniel is, is, is having trouble figuring out what, what this last dream is about. 
with these animals. So God sends an angel and tells the angel, okay, go to Daniel and explain the dream. Yeah. So this is the explanation to the dream. Yeah. Remember, 605 BC. It says, um, Daniel 8, 20. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. Yeah. So at the time of this dream, yeah, Babylon was still in charge. Yeah. And Daniel got to see the Medes and the Persians take over. Yeah. So that part of the dream we know happened. Yeah. We can go to history and it's there. Yeah. And the rough goat is the king of Greece. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, which we know him as Alexander the Great. Yeah. So we go back in the history books right now. You can go see after the Medes and the Persians came Alexander the Great, the Greeks. And, and some people might say, well, you know, he might have known there's, there's ramblings, people talk, uh, Babylon is in, there's a lot of travelers. He might have guessed that. Yeah. But then he continues and he says, now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it. Yeah. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. So he's saying that the kingdom of Greece, after Alexander the, uh, the Great takes over, is going to be split in four. Now the odds of that happening are slim to none. Yeah. He, there is no way that he could have known this in, again, 605 BC. Yeah. Okay, and it continues. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come up to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding, dark sentences shall stand up. We know this now to be Rome. Yeah. It says, and his power shall be mighty, and it was, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Now, if, if you look at the history books, Rome had conquered all of Europe, had conquered part of the Middle East, and had gone all the way down to Egypt. Yeah. So um, I, I would say this is pretty accurate. Uh, uh, it says, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. In 70 AD, Rome destroyed Jerusalem. Yeah. So, so far, everything's panned out. Yeah. And though his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. If you remember the, uh, the history of Rome, the Caesars were regarded as gods. No. So, so far, everything is panned out. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. No. And we have to remember, Jesus was crucified by Romans. And then they persecuted Christians. So he also stood up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand. In other words, Rome wasn't conquered. And if you look at history books, it's there. It wasn't. Rome fell. It imploded. Yeah by its economic, civil, political, and moral reasons. Yeah. And, and that's a whole history lesson right there. Yeah. So this that Daniel wrote a yeah. little, little later than 605 BC, we know now that everything to the letter came to pass. And, and, and we can say this as surely we, we have the people that have gone to Rome and have looked at all their, their writings, have gone to Greece, have seen their history. And I like, that, and, and I like the, the uh, verse 26, it says, And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. In other words, you get to know this now. No. But this isn't going to happen right now. It's going to take some time. So that when we read it now, we can say, no. you know what? Everything came to pass. No. So 
just and this is just a glimpse of one of the things that the Bible says that would happen that did happen. Yeah. Now there's a whole bunch of other prophecies and numbers of uh, when they would come out of Babylon and when Jesus would come and uh, when um, the Romans would take power again and, and all this. Um, we're not going to go there, but it's there. Yeah. If, if, if you do want to uh, go there, please um, put a comment and we'll be really glad to study that with you. Okay, so what does the Bible say that would happen in our time? Yeah. And, and, and this is something that, that a lot of people question, yeah. just like my friend who comes and asks me every so often, so do you know when? Yeah. And the answer is, well, nobody knows when. But this question the apostles had, and the cool thing is that they actually went to Jesus and asked him, so we know in Matthew 24, 3, it says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, before I get to what Jesus answered, um, there's, there's uh, a preface to this. That is actually written later uh, in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. It says, But the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. So we don't need to know the exact date. That's not the point. No. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, raise your hand if you expect a thief to come to your house whenever he, they decide to come. Nobody expects it. That, that's the point of the thief. We don't know when he's coming. No. Mm -hmm. It says, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Um, the, uh, there's, this, there's this phrase, um, the, the calm before the storm. No. When, when, when everything's calm and we're like, Hey, look, it's really nice outside. Let's go to the beach and look outside, it's all sunny. Um, yeah, the storm is coming. Yeah. That's what it's talking about when it says, um, peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them. Uh, the next sentence is, as travail upon a woman with child. And, and, and this you can actually go to any woman that has had children and ask them, do they know when the child is coming? And most of them will say, well, yeah, yeah. you have signs that are visible and um, you have pain that comes before the child. Yeah. And um, what's interesting is when, when, when you start getting these labor pains at the beginning, they're far off one from the other. Yeah. Two hours, an hour, something like that. And, and, and you know that eventually the baby's coming, but not yet. Now, when, when these labor pains start getting closer and closer, it's time to go to the hospital. Because the baby's coming. Yeah, it's coming now. Yeah. So it's telling us that this is the way that it's going to be. Yeah. At the beginning, we're going to start seeing things that are far off, and then they're going to get closer and closer and closer together. Yeah. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, and that, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So if we're not in darkness, we're in light. The Bible is telling us what is going to happen so that when it happens, we know that it is the truth so that we may believe. That that day should overtake you as a thief. So if we know what's going to happen, it's not going to overtake us. Ye are the children of the light. And if you put a light in a dark room, the darkness is going to disappear. That's our job. We are the light. We are here to tell Everybody else, those that don't know, look, this is what's going to happen. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Yeah. So when you're in darkness, you, you, you can't see anything. The objective is for us to shine light. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, 
but let us watch and be sober. In other words, we're going to see what these things are that we need to be looking out for. So what did Jesus answer? Matthew 24, 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Let me read that again. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, um, with, with, with my children, um, I have this, this uh, visual about the truth. Now, if you take a gallon of water, of clean water, uh, and you drop uh, a drop of um, food coloring, you're going to see that the water changes just a little bit. Now imagine that that, that drop isn't food coloring anymore, but poison. Would you drink it? The answer is no. Same thing happens with truth. You can have a gallon of truth, but you drop in one lie and suddenly the whole thing is corrupted. So when Jesus is telling us, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's what he's talking about. A lot of people, yeah. knowing or unknowing, yeah. will say 99.9% .9 of the truth and then just a little itty bitty lie. And that itty bitty lie will start confusing and will bring questions oh. and will spark doubts. So, so, so is, is, isn't the rapture that I'm going to be in my car and suddenly people are going to disappear and planes are going to fall off, uh, off the sky and, and, well, no, that's not what the Bible says. So what does it say? It says, okay, so many shall come in my name and saying, I am Christ and they shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay, we can check that off. Uh, right now, if you turn on the TV, you can see, let's see, we have um, economic war with China. We have uh, Ukraine and Russia. We have um, North Korea and everybody else. Uh, Japan and the South China Sea. I mean, you name the area, there is a war going on. Yeah. And like I was clarifying before, it's not that there wasn't war before, it's that now it's happening even more. Yeah. It says, wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. So it's telling us, this is going to happen, chill. Be calm, I'm still in control. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. No. So, okay, so we don't have to worry about the wars yet. No. It says, for nation shall rise against nation. And, and, and uh, upon studying this nation shall rise against nation, um, I, I, I was reading a, a, another sermon from someone else, and he, he did a little bit digging into this nation against nation. And in the original Hebrew, it says races. So one race shall rise against another race. And, and I think we can see this all over the world, having every time happening more. Yeah. It, it's not just that, that I'm from Colombia and they're from Venezuela. Yeah. It's, it's, okay, well, my skin color is different than yours, or my nose is different than yours, or my ears are different than yours, so, so we don't like you, or you don't like us. But they tend to forget, God created all of us. So, so people forget this. Yeah. There shouldn't be any reason for this. Someone's pitting us once again against the other. Yeah. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to go into detail with, with these. I, I did some research on the, on the, on the famines. And it um, says, around the world, more than enough food is produced to feed the global population. All a billion of us, and then some. 
um, but more than 690 million people still grow hungry. So we have the food, and yet 690 million people still go hungry. After steadily declining for a decade, world hunger is on the rise, affecting 8.9% of people globally. From 2018 to 2019, the number of unnourished people grew by 10 million. There are nearly 60 million more undernourished people now than in 2014. And this is coming from Action Against Hunger. You can look up their website, it's there. The global hunger crisis caused by conflict and now compounded by COVID-19 is moving into a dangerous phase. The head of the UN World Food Program said on Thursday, this is a couple of weeks ago, hmm. stressing that without resources, a wave of famine could sweep the globe, overwhelming nations already weakened by years of instability. And this is coming from the World Health Organization. So let's see, we have uh, wars, we have famines, we have race against race. Um, next comes pestilence, World Health Organization. And I'm gonna name just a couple of the ones that the World Health Organization is tracking. Uh, chikungunya, cholera, Crimean, Congo hemorrhagic fever, Ebola, Hendra, I don't know what Hendra is, influenza, Lassa fever, Marburg virus disease, meningitis, MERS, monkeypox. Okay, so we had chickenpox and we have um, monkeypox now. Uh, Nipah virus infection, novel coronavirus, the plague, and I actually thought that the plague was abolished. Apparently it's not. Um, the Rift Valley fever, SARS, smallpox, tularemia, yellow fever, Zika virus disease. And this is just the ones that they're tracking. Yeah. So let's see. We have um, the race against race, kingdom against kingdom, famine, pestilence. Uh, the next one is earthquakes. In the last uh, 24 hours, and, and you can check this in the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, we've had at least 38 earthquakes of 2.5 percent magnitude, uh, 2 percent magnitude, in diverse places. So this is all over the world. Again, it's it's not that it doesn't happen; is that it's happening faster. Yeah. Okay, so then it comes and says. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, but wait, there is more. It says, and then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. So you have to remember, this is Jesus talking, and he's talking to the apostles, to so the people that believe in him. So he's saying, then they shall deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So, in other words, because we believe in Jesus, we are going to be killed and afflicted because of Jesus. Says, um, and 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 so I had a question about this: Who is this you, and who is going to be afflicting? So if we go to Mark 13, 9, it said, take, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. Now, this councils that is talking about at that time, this is the, the civil law, no. the government, the church, the politicians church and judges. No. Oh. And in the synagogues, wait, synagogues are church. So, so they're going to take us to court and to be tried at the church. In other words, what it's saying is you're going to have a unification of church and state. Now, the last time that this happened massively, we had the Inquisition, just to give you a perspective. Ye shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my name's sake. So a lot of people misunderstand this. It's saying you, you shall be taken to the rulers yeah. because you believe in Jesus so that they may judge you. But the irony of it is the next sentence says, for a testimony against them. See, you are doing what is correct. 
and, and later on, I'm going to follow this. What is this that you are doing? And yet, even though you are doing what is correct, you're going to be taken to be judged by these rulers and to these courts and to these churches so that they may hear you. And, 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 and if, if, you, if you're a fan of, of um, uh, watching court on TV, um, you can see that this is going to be publicized everywhere. So a lot of people are going to get to hear what's going on. Why are you being judged? Because you follow this Jesus person and what he said. Jeremiah 17, 5, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So, right now, when I was reading this, I'm like, well, really, what I can do is I can go to my friend's house, and he doesn't believe what I believe, so I should be okay. No. Because they're going to be the ones that are turning you in. Let me say that again. The people around you are going to be turning you in. The odd thing is they're going to believe that they're doing God's will. Not just your neighbors, but your own family. Because, you know, he's the weird one. So, look, if the government is saying those people that follow the Bible to exactly what it says, those fundamentalist people... Yeah, they're dangerous, so, so we need to get rid of them. So let us know where they are. We'll go pick them up for you. Um, so we can't trust in man. No. We can't even trust in our own family. Guess who we can trust in? No. The Lord it says... And then shall, going back to um, where I was before, and then shall many be offended. Yeah, I think we have that right now. You sneeze, someone gets offended. And shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Again, this is Jesus talking. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So if, if, if you are used to the instant gratification, you, you forget what love is. I want the car. I want the boat. I want my Big Mac now. The way I like it. So... But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So there's the, the end at the light of the tunnel. That's not really the train coming for you. It says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for, all, for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So now we know what's going to happen before the end comes. So what is this that what is this covenant that God made with, with us that he's asking for us to do? How will people know the difference between okay, you are a follower of Jesus and you're neither hot nor cold so we're just going to leave you alone. Yeah. Revelation 12:17. See and, and 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 when we get to this part people get scared. Yeah. Forget the famines and the wars and the pestilence and all this. That part people are used to. This is the part that gets people scared. When they actually know how it is that God wants us to behave. What it is that we need to do to be saved. It says, Revelation twelve seventeen, And the dragon was wroth with a woman. And... and the dragon basically is the devil, and the woman is the church. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which is us, and you, 
and people that want to be saved. Which keep the commandments of God. So there's the first thing. We need to keep the commandments of God. The Ten Commandments of God. Not the Nine Commandments of God or the Seven Commandments of God. Yeah. If you don't know where they are, they're in Exodus 20. We can go read them. They're all there. So those that, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, see, when we get to, okay, so have the testimony of Jesus. So what is this testimony of Jesus Christ? That's the second question. In Revelation 19.10, it answers that question. It says, and I fell to, at his feet to worship him. Yeah. An angel. And he said unto me, see thou do not do it not. So we're not here to worship angels. Mm -hmm. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. There we go, the testimony of Jesus. So what is it? Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the fact that we have faith in what God said would happen, that is the testimony of Jesus Christ. So those that keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, those are going to be the ones that are going to be saved. Yeah. It says, okay, uh, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So in the, in the Old Testament, and, 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 and some people argue that it was uh, one of the first books to be uh, written. Um, we have a story of, of a gentleman that went through this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the story goes that um, God was with his counsel. And um, he, he's looking at the world and um, the devil comes in. And he, he, he is in this council and God says, um, that there is this man that follows everything that God says. And the devil comes and says, well, no, you know, the only reason that why he follows it is because you've given him so much. So God says, okay, you can go to this gentleman whose name is Job and you can take everything away. Just don't kill him. So the devil does his worst. In 24 hours, Job loses his family, his home, his lands, his health. Ironically, he doesn't lose his wife. We'll get to that. So Job, everything that the Bible has said that would happen to us, there's a story in the Bible of someone who already went through this. Even his friends come and tell him, look, you must have done something really bad for all this to happen to you. No. And Job says, no. I have followed everything that the Lord has said. No. And even if I die, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna go against God. And that's when the wife comes in. She says, Job, you're delirious now. Go away from God and die in peace. And, and his answer to his wife, it is like a stab to the heart to us. It says, why are you acting this way? You're acting like a foolish wife. Okay. So what does that mean? Job's wife was acting like everybody else. She was behaving not like a godly wife. And the devil knew that if she could get to Job like she got to Adam, yeah, he'd win. But Job didn't. Job loved God more than he loved his own life. 
And that's something we have to remember because when all these plagues and pestilence and war comes to happen, we have to remember Job. We have to remember that even, even if this world kills us, we have a God that is more powerful. Yeah. And at this time, and the reason for this sermon, is because right now no one can say, I didn't know. Nobody told me. If you're waiting for a sign, this is the sign. We are telling you, look, the Bible has been shown to be the truth. There are many books in the world. The Bible actually has said what will happen before it happens so that we may believe what's going to happen and that God is in charge. So right now it's, it's, it's no longer in your brothers or your mothers or your sisters or your cousins or your friends power to tell you to do something it's your choice you know the truth now you know what's going to happen and that these things are happening now so that when they start happening faster you can say oh you know what that that's that's what the bible says this is what's going to happen so i need to take action now now, um, something that, that, that Bobby talked about, um, I, I, um, I'm a financial coach. I help people get out of debt. I ha help people prepare. Prepare. That's what we have to do. That's what it's talking about. So I'll, 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 I'll leave you with that question. Are you willing and ready to start preparing? Because all the information is in front of you. If you have questions, if, if you want to study with us, we will gladly study with you. Put a comment underneath. Send us a message. We're here for you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, dear Lord, thank you for this message. Thank you for showing us the things that would happen and will happen so that when they happen, we understand that you are in control and that we can believe in you with everything that we have, that we love you more than our own lives like Job. Dear God, open our eyes and our hearts. Forgive us of the dumb things that we have done so we may follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.